morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Thank you for joining me again today for another live Q&A session. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Angela. I'm a full-time voiceover artist and audiobook narrator. And my channel here on YouTube and Facebook, I guess, is dedicated to those of you just getting started out in this wonderful world of voiceover and audiobook narration. And through my channel, I share with you some tips and tricks and techniques that I use every day in my own voiceover business, and I answer your questions. So if you're not new here, then you know that every week I have a new poll. And because I like to get different perspectives on these things. And today's poll is, do you feel that you sometimes judge yourself too harshly. And that could mean even do you tend to hyper fixate on things that really would, wouldn't be noticed, perhaps? Or do you think maybe you take too long in editing? Do you think maybe you take too long in the prep work, perhaps prolonging or procrastinating on getting started on things? Do you think that maybe you aren't as successful as others because of something that you lack or don't know? Or I would have to say, I'm just going to take a stab and say, because myself included, yes, I think I do. I think I do judge myself too harshly sometimes. And I think that is completely normal. It's not completely healthy but I think it's a very human thing that we see perhaps maybe success of others and maybe we hear about, you know, maybe I take 10 hours to get a one-hour book done and I see somebody else doing it in two or three hours. And I'm like, man, what is wrong with me? Why is it taking me so long when they're doing it so quickly? And I think let's be real. It's because we need more practice. It's because we need to just understand that we're not going to just start out at where some of these other people are 10 years in, right? We have to give ourselves some grace because we are human and we're not born with the knowledge or the talent or the skill that other people are. It might take us a little bit longer than others to get to where we want to be, but it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with us. I've said this a million times, and I'm sorry, but I'm going to say it again. Everybody's journey is different. Everybody's circumstances, schedules, abilities are different. What matters is what you put into it, the training, the practice, right? It all comes in time. And that time might be different for everybody. I think most of the time it is different for everybody because we're all different, right? So be real. Do you feel that you're too harsh on yourself sometimes? Let's go over to the poll. Let's see what everybody else is saying. Oh, okay. So 22 votes. 95% of you said yes. 5% of you said no. Okay. I, I thought that it would be a landslide, 100% uh, yes, but perhaps no. <laughs> and that's okay. You know, again, some people are a little bit different than others. You know, we all have different places where we are in our journey. Okay. Very interesting. Okay, so today I'm trying to stream to Facebook. So if you're watching this on Facebook, please be sure to, if you leave a comment, to include your name into the comments so that I can see it. I want to make sure that I see everybody's comments. And I know <clears throat> with Facebook... Sometimes it just says Facebook user. It doesn't give me a name. So if you're watching on Facebook, please include your name in your comment and I will see it. 
All right, let's see who is here this morning. Ruthie is first in today. First comment of the day, Ruthie. Hello from sunny Chattanooga, Tennessee. How are you today, Ruthie? <clears throat> oh, and if you want to share anything, if you want to share with the group right now, there's about 20, well, 30 people watching. If you want to share what you do, how you're too harsh on yourself, maybe what you hyper fixate on, share. Share with the rest of us here. We're all friends. We're all friends here. Williams 62922. Hi from Williams. Well, hello from Williams. Mike is here. Hi, Mike. Hi from Minnesota, Mike. That's what we're going to call you now. Minnesota, Mike. <laughs> Shannon, good morning from Central California. Hello, Shannon. I miss California. I miss the water mainly. Chadwick, hello from Tornado Alley, uh, um, Texas. <laughs> no, I know that you guys, and I know I pretty much live under a rock anymore, but do you, what time of the year? Is there a specific time of year where you guys see a lot of weather activity in that respect? Is it now or is it in the fall, summer? I told you I live under a rock, okay? Hat Pauser, good morning. Good morning, Hat. Nice to have you here. Clinton, good morning from for me. Hello from Southern Oregon. Thank you for all the advice and experience you share. Well, thank you for joining, first and foremost. I really appreciate the time that you guys all take to take a little time out of your day and hang out with me and everybody else here in the group. I appreciate you. And Southern Oregon, love Oregon, so green. Pamela. Hi, from Port of Los Angeles. Well, hello, Pamela. Thank you for joining. Um, let's see if there are, there are some, okay, make sure, want to make sure the Facebook comments are coming through. Make sure to put your name in your comment because it just, I just checked, it says Facebook user. <laughs> Lorna is here. Good morning, Lorna. Yes, always room to improve and grow and still learning lots. Good frosty morning from Oregon. 30 degrees Fahrenheit right now. I think we started out when I got up this morning. It was 41 degrees here in uh, Arizona. Not 30, but still cold for us uh, desert folk. That's nice. Is it snowing yet up there or just frosty? Andy B is here. Good morning, Andy B. I am my own worst critic. I would say brutal. And I would say, Andy, that is completely normal. I am my own worst critic. I think a lot of us can say the same. Because I think a part of it is because with all of the, the videos we watch, all the training we get, all of the other voice actors we talk to, once we're made aware of the things to not do, or the things to remove or edit out or reduce or the things that are bad in a voice recording, then we hyper fixate on those things. Once you hear them, you can't unhear them, right? We know they're there. And once you know it's there, you want to get rid of it. You want to get, you know, cut it out, reduce it, heel brush it out. And then we tend to hyper fixate on things that a lot of times other people don't hear. So that is why we are our own worst critic, because we know what should and shouldn't be there in a, in a recording of any kind when other people might not even notice. Or we might hyper fixate on something that is a natural nuance to our voice, but in our head, it's not supposed to be there, right? I have a little bit of a gravelly voice. I have a little bit of a, what's it called? A, a, not of a vibrato. I forget what it's called now. The word's not coming to me, of course. I need more coffee. But I could hyper fixate on removing some of the natural nuances to my voice because I think it's wrong or bad or distracting. But it's my voice. That's what it is. That's what it sounds like. And if you have a client that has heard your demo and they heard what you sound like, then they've already accepted 
that you are the right voice for that project. It has nothing to do with maybe the gravel in your voice or whatever aspect it is to your voice that you're hyper fixated on. It might not necessarily be a bad thing. Right? So I completely understand, Andy, but I think more often, often than not, it's, it's completely normal that we are our own worst critic. But that is why it's also important to have other people listen to your work. So they can, and you know, maybe not tell them anything, just say, here, what do you guys hear when you hear this? Is there anything that catches your attention? Most of the time people say no. And then what you thought was a problem is not a problem at all. Vaping Mike. <laughs> Hi, Vaping Mike. How long was it before you were comfortable in what and how you were doing things? I can tell you it took a long time. I'm still not completely comfortable. Again, even, gosh, almost four and a half years in now, I still am not completely comfortable with everything that I do. And there might be some uh, jobs that I do that maybe I feel like, after, you know, in retrospect, that I maybe could have done a little bit differently, or maybe the client could have taken another take. Maybe I should have done another take. Maybe this isn't the best interpretation of this script. But then the client says, oh, yes, this was great. Five-star review. And here's a tip. It was perfect. Exactly what I was looking for. Right? So again, we are our own worst critic. And I'm not completely comfortable all the time with everything that I do. Maybe I just think too much about what I'm doing or not doing. Right? So I think it just comes with time, feeling more comfortable as you go along and understanding, I think understanding your DAW and how the editing process works and maybe getting a sound engineer to help you with your um, mastering processes. You know, all of those things coming into place, you start to feel more comfortable with what you're doing, but it does come with time. And that's just a natural process of anything new. So... I would say it took a couple of years, really, until I was almost completely comfortable with what I was doing. But I still, I mean, it, there's still that voice in your head that says, you need to do this, or you need to work on this, or you need to do this better. So I don't think it ever really completely goes away. Mike says, great topic, Angela. Pretty sure all of us experience this at different levels throughout our careers, no matter the career. Absolutely. It's a completely normal thing, especially when you're starting something new, right? You have those doubts, that imposter syndrome. You know, doubting yourself is completely normal. But Phil, hey, Phil, how you doing, Phil? Chadwick Haley has a little smirky face. Why is that, Chadwick? Why are you doing smirky face? Shannon says, I have an off-topic question for you. What was your initial soundproof recording studio setup like in a closet or in a room? My very first one, here's, here's proof that's showing you <laughs> you don't know what you don't know. I started out in my living room at my dining room table <laughs> with 10-foot ceilings and no soundproofing at all on a glass table. I didn't know anything about anything at that point. And then I realized that I have this storage slash office space down here in my townhome. So I use, it was a storage room, so I've converted it to be a studio. And it's really just a like a five by six box <laughs> that I converted into a studio. But to soundproof it or to dampen uh, any kind of echoes or anything, I've draped almost every wall in the ceiling in here with uh, moving blankets because it was a little bit easier and cost effective to get moving blankets than to completely tile this room with acoustic panels. You know, the little wedgie foam things. I started out with trying to do that, but hanging those proved to be difficult. But once I figured out how to hang those, I figured out that it was probably a little bit of a better idea <laughs> just to do it this way, because that way I can, you know, cut the, the sharp corners. I can drape more of the wall with, you know, less frustration, I suppose. 
So, but this is pretty much where I've been for almost the entirety of my career here in this room. Facebook user. Hi from Dobbs Ferry, New York. Facebook, face, Facebook user. <laughs> Facebook user. <laughs> ah, Facebook user, please remember if you're using, if you're commenting on Facebook, please include your name because I, it just says Facebook user. Obviously, I feel scrambled unless you want to stay anonymous and that's fine too. Obviously, I feel scrambled. I couldn't even find where to answer the poll. It's on YouTube. So I apologize for that. I'm still learning how to use all of this stuff. So please bear with me. Um, actually, if I look up uh, Facebook here, I can probably see names. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let me just check here. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So it looks like Judy. That was Judy. Obviously, I feel scrambled. Yeah, I think this is a little bit of a learning curve. So if there is a way to put the uh, poll on Facebook, I'll try to do that next time I go live here. So I, I appreciate your patience with me. I'm learning new things. Phil says, I most definitely feel I'm hard on myself because in the world of business, if you don't offer the absolute best of you, you won't make it, especially with all the competition out there. Yeah, um, I completely agree with you, Phil. Although I think if you... If you're not at the absolute best part of you yet, that's still okay. Getting out there and trying, I think, is the most important thing. Because if you wait until you're the absolute best of yourself, you're never going to get there. <laughs> you have to put yourself out there and try and then learn as you grow and hone your skills. I completely agree with you, Phil. But, I mean, there is a lot of competition. But, again... In the voice acting industry, <clears throat> we represent the world, right? Voice actors are the voice of everybody in the world. So in terms of competition, yes, there's a lot of us out there, but not every voice is going to suit every project because there is a different audience. There's a different intent, sound, tone, quality needed for just about every product or project. So... Yeah, there's a lot of us out there, but we all have different um, uses for our voice. <clears throat> so don't let the number of voice actors out there deter you at all, because there is a place for all of us. You just have to find your niche. And in doing that, putting yourself out there and trying, making connections, doing the work, you come to find out what your niche is, what your voice is best suited for. And that goes back to that old adage, right? It doesn't matter how many times you get knocked down. What matters is how many times you get back up. And that goes with any business. So for those of you that are just, just thinking about getting into voice acting, but maybe it's a little intimidating because there are so many of us out there, or maybe, you know, whatever it is, maybe there's all these people over here are making so much money doing this, but you feel like you're just, you know, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I'm not going to be good at this. I'm never going to get to where they, those people are. I was there too. I did not start this business knowing what I know now. I couldn't have learned what I know now without going through the process of learning and training and practicing. So please don't be discouraged by anything that you see that could be in your own head, like discouraging or, you know, because you can get there. You just have to put in the time and the effort and put your best foot forward or your best foot of your current ability and skill and then learn as you go. <clears throat> wow, that was a tangent. Oh, there's a couple of super chats. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm so, oh, my gosh. There's so many comments. Sean Lester, thank you so much. <clears throat> I'm so froggy all of a sudden. Thank you so much for the for the super chat. I really appreciate that. You guys are so sweet. Um, when asked why the VO business has taken off, I responded with advice I picked up listening in on this forum. I'm grateful for what you do here. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Sean. Even the comment was just, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate that. And I'm so glad that 
this weekly Q&A helps because that's, that's the whole point, right? I'm glad because I also learn from you. I love all the different perspectives on things. And it's it's all about community, right? It's community. It's us getting together and talking about these things. Granted, I do most of the talking, but you know, we get to vent and feel and understand and learn from each other. It's, I love this community. Thank you so much for that, Sean. And then there was another one, Louie, how you doing? Affiliate power source. If you, if you had a time machine, how would you advise yourself on how to go from zero to 50 in a day using voiceover? Oh my gosh. Um, <clears throat> if I could go back to baby me, baby voice over me, um, four and a half years ago, I would say, get your space right. Get your recording space right. Because people talk about microphones, they talk about interfaces, they talk about DAWs, they talk about all of these things in, in hardware, software. But I think one of the most important things is getting your space sounding correct. And that is really taking a hard look and listen to your recording space, your chosen recording space. Because if you have a $50 microphone versus a $5,000 microphone, it's still going to reflect how your room sounds. And perhaps that $5,000 microphone is going to reflect that poor sounding space even better. <laughs> right? So whatever space that you, ch how you have chosen to make your dedicated recording space, and if you can have a dedicated recording space, that's even better, meaning it's not someplace that you're moving to every time you need to record something. If you can have a dedicated workspace where nothing is changed, because even sometimes the smallest change in your mic position, how much sound dampening material you have or where it's positioned is going to change the sound of your recording. Maybe not super noticeably, but it will be noticeable to the right ear. So having a dedicated recording space where there are no smooth surfaces, because those walls and your desktop, your monitor, those hard surfaces will reflect your voice causing echo, right? So Making sure that your recording space is set up properly, I think, is going to be one of the most important things. And then second to that is going to be training, practicing, learning from groups, mentors, you know, soaking in everything that you can, and then practicing. Making samples, making demos, going out there and finding work. And sometimes you're going to fall on your face in the process, but that's okay. That's part of the process. It just matters. What matters most is that you get back up from that and keep going. Right? Right. Thank you again, Louie and Sean. You guys are the best. All right. Now I got to go and find <laughs> where the heck I was. Oh, okay. I think that we're here. Okay. Hat says, I watched a Josh Meyer voiceover master's video about audacity, where he re-recorded parts of a commercial about 50 times. And I thought the first take sounded perfect. So you're not the only one. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I, I've done that too, where I've recorded something at not 50 times, but my goodness, it was a lot. And then I go back and listen, and the first take, or maybe even the second take, was just fine. <laughs> there was no need to redo it 50 million times. So, hey, it's a completely normal thing. We all do it, right? Melina Joy says, good morning from Lancaster, California. Here's another Facebook user. I'm going to have to go and find you here. Uh, Boise, Idaho. Ramiro. Good morning, Ramiro. Nice to have you here. Barb Cam says, Hi, Angela. I think we have a tendency to be hard on ourselves. Really, there is so much to learn and put in place before we can jump into VO. Just keep working it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And even when you don't have, I mean, getting started is, is hard enough. You know, setting up all the profiles, setting up all the equipment, learning your DAW, 
practicing, getting your recording space. There's a lot to do in the beginning, but it's it's a temporary part, right? Once you get past all of that stuff, then you can focus more on training and practicing and all of that. So again, it's just a process. Not all of it's going to be easy. Actually, none of it's easy, <laughs> but you can do it if you just keep with it and keep learning and growing and streamlining your process and you know, finding your money voice and all of that stuff comes with time and just say it with me, doing it, right? Just do it. Absolutely. Chadwick says, this poll is something that I've struggled with, specifically perfectionism and analysis paralysis. Yes, absolutely. I've learned that massive imperfection action is the key to getting past this. Yes, analysis paralysis. Yes, that could also be called procrastinate learning. That's another form. Perfectionism. Everybody has a different definition of perfectionism. What is perfect to you may not be perfect to someone else, right? Because everyone's got a different level of this idea of perfectionism. But there's no such thing as perfect. There's perfect in your head, right? But is it realistic? Because what I think we tend to do, and going back to what I was talking about in the beginning about hyper fixating on something that doesn't really matter, is that we hyper fixate on these things. And then therefore, it makes this recording not perfect in your head. When if you played it for somebody else, Something else you need to consider, just complete side note, is that most of the time when we're doing our editing, we're listening through studio quality headphones, which are going to highlight everything that we may consider to be wrong. When someone listening to your recording might be listening on an earbud or a car speaker or speaker speakers, like what we call monitors here in our studio, those are not going to be as clear as our studio quality headphones when we're when we're listening back to something. So that is something to consider. It's going to sound a little bit different, not as clear and concise and, you know, to whoever's listening to it. But that was just a side note, something else to keep in mind. But again, what we hyper fixate on, someone else may not even hear it. I've, I can't even tell you how many times that I've had somebody send me something to listen to and they go, here, take a listen to this and tell me what you hear. Or maybe they've even told me, here, this spot right here, there is this throat noise, or there's a click, or there's a, a nose fart, or something. And I don't hear it. Even knowing that it's there, because they told me it's there, I don't hear it. It's just, to me, it sounds like a natural nuance to their voice. It's, a, it's an aspect of their voice that makes them sound human. And so when we hyper fixate on all of these little things that we consider to be bad or wrong, then what we end up doing is taking the human out of our voices and we end up sounding like an AI. <laughs> right? So don't hyper fixate on all of these things that make us human because a lot of people aren't even going to hear it or notice it. Right? We can't be so hard on ourselves about things that just don't really matter in the end. And spending so much time on editing out these things that are meant to be there. Tangent. <laughs> Hat says, springtime is worse tornado weather for Texas. I'm originally from Dallas County. Springtime. Springtime. So that would be, yeah. So after winter, after, like, I would imagine there's a lot of moisture in the air from everything thawing out from where, you know, snow is. And yeah, that makes sense. Jeez. I'm glad that all I have to deal with here in Arizona are monsoons and scorpions. <laughs> I'm from California. I'm used to earthquakes and stuff. So I can deal with the heat now. My, my blood is thinned out enough. I think I'm, I'm okay with it. All right. So Facebook user. OK, let's find your name. Let's go back here. Um, this looks like Judy. Judy says, I did just finish refurbishing an old chicken coop in my new studio. I'm going to be doing the lights and plugs today, but I don't really know my next step is. Um, 
treating the walls, I would say. I mean, I'm, I don't know what your space looks like, but if I had to guess, if you've got wood all around you, I would definitely find some soft surfaces. I'm doing this, but you can't see my hand. Soft surfaces of some sort to line the walls and your desktop, the floor, to make sure you don't get any kind of echo. That would be my next step. And then record something with everything set up in your room. And then take a listen to how it sounds. Do you hear echo? Do you hear reverb? And if you do, then take another hard look at your space and maybe treat some more areas. The door, don't ever forget the door. The door is something I always forget to, to mention to people. The door also can reflect. Andy B says, I've been going through the lessons and reading since 2019, September, but have yet to jump in. I am big on anxiety, procrastination, and bad time management, and two crazy dogs. So I would imagine that the clicker method is not going to be your best bet for recording because your dogs, if your dogs have been trained with the clicker, they might come running every time you make a mistake. <laughs> I understand your anxiety for sure, but that hardest step is taking that step forward. But once you're past that point, the, all that comes after that is learning, right? There's no, as far as I'm concerned, there's no failing. It's just a learning opportunity, right? If you did something wrong, then hey, you learned something to not do in the future, right? So the worst that can happen is that you learn. So take that step forward. I, here, introverts unite, right? I'm an introvert. I don't want <laughs> to be in the spotlight for anything. I don't want anyone to be listening to something that I record and like judging me. But that's part of this business. That's part of what this is. So I have to just overcome that, compartmentalize it however you want to do it, and just put yourself out there and jump in, Andy. My stomach's growling. Jump in, Andy. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. All right. Sheila, thank you for putting your name in. I appreciate I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Hi from Dobbs Ferry, New York. Thanks for joining today. Elizabeth is here. Hello, Elizabeth. Hi, Angela. I am so hard on myself. I'm always thinking about what I did, this, that, what else I need to do, or uh, am I working hard enough? Self-judgment and mouth noise, throat gurgles are my worst issues. Same. I think I'll, I speak for a lot of people that I've worked with and that our colleagues in this industry, we could all echo the same sentiments. We judge ourselves. We probably hyperfixate a little too much on mouth noise and throat gurgles. And those are all things that just humans have to deal with in general. But there's always something to do. And I think that's good because in the times where you don't have any projects or work that needs to be done, you can use that time to keep moving forward. There's always something to do in running a business, you know, maybe discovering how you can market yourself on social media or revising your website or revising a demo or refreshing thumbnails on a, a, prof, a, a platform that you're on. There's always something to do. And all of those things that you do, all of that work that you put in is going to pay off at some point. It might not be today. It might not be tomorrow. It might be a year from now. But either way, the work has been done and it's going to pay off for you at some point. All of those seeds that you sow, you will be able to reap at some point. So keep moving forward. Lorna says, we had our first snow last weekend just south of Portland, frosty and clear today. That sounds very Christmassy. I don't know if I could handle snow. It would be too cold for me. Andy B says, too much info and resources. There's a lot out there. There's a lot out there. But you know what? Again, I say, take it all in. Everybody's got a different opinion or perspective or angle to see these things in, take it all in and just take what applies to you and your situation and leave the rest. But having too much information and resources is not necessarily a bad thing, I think. You have a lot to choose from. 
and more resources is a lot. To, you have more to choose from also in that respect, I suppose. Because then you can choose again what works for you and, you know, I, it's a lot. It's, I know it's a lot to take in. It is. I'm, I'm right there with you. <laughs> Jay says, do you ever have to stop working for a day due to outside noise? Yes. I live in the city and sometimes I have to record at night because of construction. Absolutely. I live in a complex here and then one day a week we have landscapers come. They keep changing up the day, which makes me mad. So I can't properly schedule things. <laughs> but usually they're here from seven o'clock in the morning till like two or three in the afternoon, sometimes later. And obviously I can't work with all of that noise going on. So I edit in that time or I work on my website, or I, again, keep moving forward. I'm doing something else with my time that I'm still in here working. It's not recording a voiceover or maybe even editing a voiceover, but I'm doing something to keep moving forward when there's too much outside noise. So yes, but I don't think I completely take a day off unless I'm completely caught up, which hasn't been in a while. <laughs> Chadwick <clears throat> excuse me, Chadwick says, well, we had a tornado pass right by the house this, this morning and several others touched down across DFW this morning. We had the whole farm or the whole fam tucked in the hallway in a couch cushion for it. Oh my gosh. I will never complain about monsoons and scorpions again. <laughs> I hope you guys are safe. Hat says uh, at Chadwick, yikes, winter tornadoes, weather modification. Yeah, that's another weird thing, isn't it? I've heard a little bit about that. Weird. Andy B says, former radio guy, 12 years, so I have an ingrained approach. Yeah, and I, I know several former radio guys and gals that have gotten into voiceover. And I think for you guys, it's a little bit more difficult to undo the radio announcer voice that, especially if this was 12 years ago, then you're like right in that that segment of the radio announcer voice where that is not really voiceover. It's not really what people want, right? So I think that is the hardest part for you, but you can do it with a little bit of practice. I have um, a former radio person in my platinum group and she, I swear to you, she has won the award for, and if you're watching, you know who you are. She has won the award for most improved over the course of the last few months. Because I think that was probably a big thing for her to, to undo, to unlearn, is that radio announcer voice. But as she went along and practiced and got feedback from the group, she has turned her audiobook narration into something beautiful, right? Without having to sound too announcery. But just know that you're not alone in that respect, Andy. And it can be done. You just got to get out there and do it. Chadwick says at Hat, Hat Pauser, maybe so. I'm not convinced that it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Ramiro says, hello from Boise, Idaho. My issue is in the same way some people have a face for radio, I feel I have a voice for silent movies. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. Here, don't be too hard on yourself. Again, voice actors represent the world. There's a need for every voice. So get out there, Ramiro. That's funny. <laughs> Sean says, when I become frustrated trying to fix something I don't like in my recording, my wife often comes to my rescue to say, you aren't the only one how you are the only one how hears it or even cares about it. Exactly. That was what I was saying earlier is that because we know what to listen for, we hyper fixate it on hyper fixate on it in our own recordings when other people don't even know about it. They don't even know that it's there. To them, it's just a human. It's a human's voice recording a commercial, a story, whatever it is. But we know about mouth noise and nose farts and throat gurgles and all of the things that aren't supposed to be there. All of those things that are distracting. And yeah, I remove some of those that are super audible right? That may be distracting, but some of those are just natural aspects to a human voice that are okay to leave. 
but we hyper fixate on them as being bad, need to remove this, need to spend three hours on editing to remove this one, you know, click that no one else hears but you. <laughs> I totally understand that. Uh, Sean also says, also, I have a slight French Canadian aff affectation to my vowels, which I am self-conscious about. <laughs> I have come to accept that as part of the uniqueness that gets me jobs. 150%, Sean. It's, 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 it's an attribute to your voice that differentiates you from everybody else. That makes your voice special. It's not a bad thing at all. You're the best, Sean. Ruthie says, where is the best place to learn editing? YouTube? Or joining a group, like um, like a mentorship type of a group. There's um, Facebook groups. <clears throat> if you can, ideally, because everybody's DAWs and editing styles are a little bit different, I would say if you can join a group or hire a mentor or a coach that also is familiar with your DAW that you're using, they can do like a one-on-one -on -one with you to help you um, show you what effects to use, what edits to use, what would work best for your situation. I think that would be the best way to go, but start on YouTube. There's a lot here on YouTube that you can find to maybe learn yourself for free. Or if you need a little bit more extra help, then I would find someone who is familiar with your DAW and reach out to them and then spend a little time maybe learning a few tricks or a few techniques that might help you. Um, get over the the hurdle that you're currently experiencing. Ruthie, uh, that was Ruthie. This is not Ruthie. This is, <laughs> hang on. Uh, let's see. Uh, Facebook user says, that's Judy saying, I'm not seeing any of the people's posts that you were reading. Still not used to this stuff yet. I am currently streaming to YouTube and to Facebook. So the comments that you're probably not seeing because it looks like you're using Facebook to, to watch me right now. The other posts that I'm reading are from YouTube. So I have YouTube comments, YouTube comments, and then Facebook comments here. Or I'm just nuts <laughs> making stuff up, which wouldn't surprise me either. Consorcio says, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah, you don't know what you don't know until you have to know it, right? Absolutely. Pat says, so do you ever do an audition in more than one style? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, like an actor doing a scene several different ways to give your director editor options. I wonder if a client would even listen. Yes, but the trick to that is, is that if you're reading a script or an audition and you think that maybe your interpretation could go one of two ways, start your audition with take one of two. So whoever's listening knows that there are two takes. This is the first one, and then the second one is to follow. So start it with take one of two, and then start your second one with take two, right? And then you could put in the message to whomever you're sending the audition to that there are two takes on this demo, because maybe there are two different ways that I thought that this could go. So I'm giving you two different takes. But again, if you need anything else or you want it differently, even other than the two takes that I gave you, I'll be more than happy to accommodate you and see if I can achieve this tone or this whatever that you're looking for. So that's what I would I would do. Pamela says, ACX question. Does anyone else have a problem with getting tax info cleared with just a personal tax ID? Put my info in some time ago. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think, I think I used my, excuse me, my personal tax ID with ACX. Although I'm trying to remember if I even have them withhold tax. I think you have the option, don't you? To have them withhold it or if you handle it on your end with taxes um, every quarter or at the end of the year. I've never had an issue with them or heard of an issue with them like taking a lot of time to verify or confirm or whatever. It's I think it's just a matter of you turning in your W-9 and then it's up to you, right? How you want them to handle the taxes or if you want them to handle the taxes. 
I would contact customer support and ask them about that if I, if I was in that position. Mercer voiceover says, hi, Angela. Well, hello. Your videos have helped me so much. Thank you. First time catching you live. I have an audio engineering degree and mainstream engineer friends who don't hear the perceived imperfect. See? See? <laughs> well, then you are a great person to know. So if you're starting voiceover, then you already have a leg up over most of us. So if you have an audio engineering degree and have an, have an, have an <laughs> slow down, Angela, a lot of audio engineer friends or colleagues, then you have other people that can double check you or, you know, listen to what you're listening to to see if it's even a thing that, you know, we need to be concerned about. But you saying that, that they don't hear your perceived imperfections is perfect. That's exactly what I've been saying. So I'm, thank you for saying that. Thank you. Vaping Mike says, an odd question. What mic shock mount are you using with your shotgun mic? This was a, I, I want to say I got it from Rycote, R-Y-O, I'm sorry, R-Y-C-O-T-E, I think is where I got it. I've had it for years now. But I want to say that, um, I think it is. I think it was Rycote is where I got it. Amazon. And I found it on Amazon. But it's just a, um, basically like gen a generic um, uh, shotgun mic shock mount. I mean, you can get one that's specially designed for the Sennheiser or the Cinco or, but this was just a generic shotgun mic and it works really well. I'm happy with it. Hat Pauser says, uh, what do you use to hang those foam tile thingies? I've had some in a box for ages now. What I ended up doing, because I didn't want to use spray adhesive on my walls and then have to scrape the foam off later, what I ended up doing was getting some um, some pretty sturdy poster board, a pretty good size one, right, um, that's pretty thick and um, rigid, <laughs> is the word I'm looking for. Use spray adhesive on that, put on your, your, your foam tiles onto that, and then thumbtack the poster board into the walls. Because in my head, filling a couple holes would be a whole lot easier than, you know, trying to scrape off foam that's stuck to the wall later. So that's what I ended up doing with my foam tiles. And it worked until I completely gutted it and redid it in here with the uh, moving blankets. Uh, Kirk is here. Good morning, Kirk. Good morning. Ah, that fine line between perfectly fine and perfectionism obsession. I, uh, what is O-T-O-H? On the other hand, I'd rather err on the side of obsessive than sloppy. Yes, fine line indeed. It is. And everybody's line is going to be a little bit different. My smirky face was supposed to be in agreement with Andy B. Oh, thank you. Thank you for explaining. I was like, why, why am I getting a smirky face? Um, Twisted681 says, good morning, Angela, from YouTube user Anonymous. <laughs> You're not anonymous YouTube user. I can see you. JCCAOL says, I think for me, when it comes to being critical of my work, I do identify as a perfectionist, which I know is not always a good thing. No, it's not. It's not. And actually, you know what? Really quick, let's go check the results of the poll. And again, the poll today was, do you feel that you sometimes judge yourself a little too harshly when it comes to your voiceover business? And that could be in your editing style. That could be in really any aspect of you building a voiceover or audiobook narration business. 52 votes, 92% of you said yes, 80, 88% uh, 80, <laughs> of you said no. I, you know, I'm still surprised that it's not a landslide 100% yes, because I, I can't tell you I haven't, I haven't met anyone yet that was completely comfortable with every aspect of what they did in their business. I have not yet met that person. So it's intriguing to me that 8% of you says that you're completely fine 
with everything that you do in every aspect, completely comfortable in your skills and ability. That is just fascinating. Well, that's cool. I'm not. <laughs> I sure as heck am not. I still, I still obsess on things that don't need to be obsessed about. Mm. Leslie says, hello, and thanks for this today. I am still making friends with my DAW and editing. I'm going to get an audio, uh, an audio checkup from a sound engineer to make sure I can deliver a quality product. It takes time. You're absolutely right. Leslie. And I had to do that too. I think it was three years ago now, almost, that I reached out to Tim Tippetts and I had him, I sent him like a raw recording of my room and all the equipment that I had. Then I met with him on Zoom a handful of times to get a parametric equalizer for Adobe Audition to be set appropriately for my voice and my situation. He also helped me set up some like keyboard shortcuts and it was amazing. So that process alone or that one thing that I did to invest in myself and, and my business has been huge because I still, I mean, three years later, <clears throat> those shortcuts and that equalizer, all of those settings that he made for me has made my life so much easier, right? And then hearing for someone with that, with a trained ear, for meeting with someone that knows what they're listening to and could hear where my sibilance was, where, you know, had the ear, the trained ear, was so encouraging to me to know that what maybe what I considered to be bad or maybe a disadvantage was not. It wasn't. <laughs> Everything that I was doing or my voice, how I was projecting or, you know, my sound quality wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Ultimately, right? Everything that I was just so hyper fixated on, my sound quality is horrible, yada, 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 and it wasn't. It just needed a little bit of massaging, a little bit of tweaking, just a little bit of a, you know, a boost in high. And then maybe here's where your sibilance lives. Let's reduce that a little bit. And then the shortcuts. I mean, they were just amazing. That was one of the best things that I did for my business. But yeah, if you can, I would highly recommend it. And it doesn't have to be Tim, of course. There's there's a handful of them out there that can help you with getting your audio quality right. And I highly recommend it. That was one of the best things that I did. Um, Facebook user, who is this? Where do I find you on YouTube? Uh, was this Judy? I'm trying to figure out. It was Judy. Where do I find you on YouTube? Voice over Angela on YouTube. That is my YouTube channel. Voice over Angela. Everything is voice over Angela. So I try to make myself easy to find. But that's where I am on YouTube. Thank you for asking. Uh, Shannon says, thank you for sharing, Angela. Welcome. I'm going forward with setting up a studio and dipping my toe in the voiceover field. Very excited to see what happens. I'm excited for you, Shannon. That's a very exciting. It's terrifying to try something new, but you'll be so proud of yourself once you do. Once you get past that, you know, and that goes with a few other commenters, too, that were letting their anxiety sort of hold them back. Just do it. Just take that step forward. You'll be so proud of yourself when you do. And again, there are no failures. They're just learning opportunities. So don't be so hard on yourself if you don't do something right. Because you're not expected to know everything right out the gate. We all start at the same place. We all start at zero. So you learn, you practice, you work with some groups or mastermind groups or with a mentor. And then you get better as you go along. But you have to get started to move forward. Chris VGL says, I'm a romance author looking to get into VO to make my own books into audibles. That's genius. And possibly work on other authors' work. Is this a good idea or should I just hire someone else to do the work? It's really up to you, Chris. I, I personally love it when authors narrate their own books because they know exactly where they're coming from. They know exactly how to interpret the script because it's their words. <laughs> you 
But it's really it really comes down to what you feel is right. If you have the time, the skill to narrate, it is a marathon. I'm going to tell you that up front. Narrating audiobooks is a marathon. It's a lot of work, a lot more than you would anticipate. But if you're up for the challenge, then go for it. But if you're not, or you don't want to take the time to learn your DAW or to, to purchase the microphone or the interface or the software or any of the stuff that goes along with it, then hire somebody else who's already versed in all of these things and has experience in recording audiobooks. But if it's something that you have, again, the time and the ability to do, I recommend doing it. Absolutely. But it really comes down to preference and time if you have the time to invest. Best of luck to you, whatever you decide to do. Uh, William62922 says, Hi, Angela. What is the price for voiceover for a five-minute healthcare topic? Need audio at industrial standard. Um, most often, voiceover is based on word count. So it would depend on your word count of your script, and then it would go from there. I don't know if you're asking me directly, as in a quote from me directly, or just generally speaking. But it's based on word count. Um, if you need separate files, if you need music added, where is it going to be listened to? Is it going to be online? Is it going to be used for promotional purposes? There's a lot of questions to ask uh, to find out how exactly to price that, right? I'm not sure what you mean at industrial standard. Like broadcast quality, perhaps? Yeah, I, I would say there would more questions need to be asked to give to give you a better idea of what that. But those are the questions to ask. Uh, Larry says, Larry in Seattle. Good morning, Angela. Good morning, Larry. Really love your content. You could be a life coach in your next life. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I don't know if I would want to tell people or suggest, or I don't know. I'm, I'm, I think I'm way too introverted for that. But I appreciate that. I'm glad that you find it helpful. A little validation for me today. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Kirk, adding, to, uh, adding on to my previous post, I don't think it's a good thing to feel comfortable with what I'm doing. Comfort equals stagnation. Great point. Because it limits growth. I always rem remember that I can be better. You're 150% correct, Kurt. Thank you for bringing that up. I completely overlooked that, that concept. Right, because you get complacent. And then you think you're, you know, th that you don't have anything more to learn. You're right. You're right. You're absolutely right, Kirk. Indeed. Shannon says, uh, when you were working full time while starting your VO business, what was your biggest challenge? Time. What is your favorite thing about doing uh, full time VO? Um, the answer to your first question was time. That was my biggest challenge. Because you're working two jobs, you're essentially burning your candle at both ends. So you're sacrificing sleep. You might be sacrificing some weekends. You might be sacrificing some time with your family. That part, I think, was the hardest part for me. And then towards the end, right before I resigned from corporate life, I was at the point where I was starting to lose voiceover business because I was not available to do it or to speak about it or to meet about it over Zoom or any. I was losing money. I was losing jobs by not being available during the day. So that is actually what was the tipping point for me where I said, okay, I need, I'm, my business is losing money because I'm employed here. And that was when I said, okay, it's time. It's time to leave. And that was, that was pretty difficult too, to, to stomach, right? Losing, losing clients over. But um, my favorite thing about doing full-time VO is that I have now the time to do it and to dedicate to my clients, to be available to them. Um, and also to be available to all of you. I know I'm not super quick on replying or seeing messages everywhere and all the places I'm available. But I think my whole why for starting this was to have more time with my family, was to have more time with my son, to be available to him, to help with homework, to pick him up from school, 
you know, take him to Taekwondo classes or basketball practice or whatever it is. I wanted to be there for my son, because as you know, that's a limited amount of time, right, to encourage and to help mold this young man into a, you know, fantastic person before he moves out and starts life on his own. So I wanted to be there and be available for that. And that was my why. And that is probably the best part of doing this is creating my schedule. Clinton says, I've gotten into a routine of when auditioning, I'll do three takes where each is based on one, what direction they gave two, what I believe they're going for three, what feels most naturally for me. And I, I'm pretty close to that too, Clinton. I, because if you've done this a few times, then you know that sometimes the client isn't really even sure what they're looking for. They have an idea of what they think might sound right. But as a professional, if you've done this a few times, then you might have a different perspective on how the clip, the script could be interpreted, right? So doing that, I think, is is a good, but just make sure that you start out the audition with one of three takes, right? This is the first of three takes. So they know that there are more in the audio that you send them. I like that. Consorcio says, absolutely dedicated recording room designation and excellent room treatment in that space is the most important part of the startup. For sure. I, yeah. And then uh, getting a decent microphone and functional audio inter interface will be no sweat once your recording studio is built right from the start. Absolutely. 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 Hi, Dave. Or, hi, Angela. <laughs> you're Dave. I'm Angela. Hi, Angela from Dave in Liverpool, UK. I hope you're well. Yes, doing great. Oh, I just saw another super chat pop up. Who was that? Scrolling. Oh, my gosh. There's so many comments. That was Shannon. Shannon. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you for all of your help and your wonderfully positive encouragement. I appreciate you, Shannon. Thank you so much. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I'm getting all shy. <laughs> and I lost my place again. Where am I? Here I am. <laughs> Thank you again. Claude, Claudier says, hello, Angela. I'm a voiceover from Brazil. Seeing you here from the state of, is it Parana? Parana. A good end of the year. Well, thank you for joining over from Brazil. I think Portuguese is one of the most beautiful languages. I just have to say. I spent three months in Lisbon, Lisboa, and it was just amazing. I fell in love with Portugal. Beautiful. Um, also, I feel like our Andy says, also, I don't, I feel like I don't like the sound of my own voice. Uh, yeah, I cringed quite a bit in the beginning. I still do. Like when my partner is flipping through YouTube and he comes across one of my meditations or something, and then he's got it, you know, audible sitting next to me that I can hear it. And I'm just like, <laughs> turn that off. Same. But don't let that deter you either, because you do get used to it for the most part, right? Because you're listening to yourself while you're editing and all of that stuff. So it sort of just becomes background noise. But then when someone else is listening to it and you're not expecting it, then you, you kind of cringe. So don't let that deter you either. That's normal. Oops. Here we go. Clinton says, I feel like there's a learned narcissism with VO, learning to accept what you sound like. Yeah. Yeah, you have to, because that's what you sound like, right? You have to own it. Mercer says, I, I'm a nose part victim. <laughs> Darling. <laughs> Guilty. Uh, is it Suze? I love that. I love you for saying that. <laughs> hey, you know part of being human. John Popovich says, hey, Angela, I'm hard on myself sometimes in voiceover radio, b-ball coach. My team lost at the buzzer last night. Oh, no, <laughs> that's the worst. 
and by gosh, kept me up all night. I bet. I believe we gain strength through adversity. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, God, a buzzer beater. That's the worst. And then they win by one point or something. That is, oh, my God, I feel you. I feel you in that. My son played basketball for a while. Yeah, we do. And everything that we, all the hardships, the adversity, the obstacles, however you want to name that, once you overcome that, not only have you learned something new, but then you also have that confidence to know that if you're met with that adversity, struggle, obstacle, again, you know how to handle it. Or anything similar to it, you know how to handle it, or at least an idea of better understanding of how to handle it. So you learn as you grow and move on. Love that. Facebook user, hold on, let me find you. That was Judy. Judy says, the chicken coop is five by four and was all PVC pipes and I covered the wall, ceiling and floor with moving blankets. I sound very, it sounds very quiet in there. I just don't know what equipment prioritize. I would say from this point, you need an external microphone. You could try a USB to start, but it sounds like you're fairly serious if you're, if you're converting a chicken coop into a studio. So for you, I would say do some research on a microphone and an interface and then find a DAW if you haven't already. Learn the DAW. Practice with the DAW, with your microphone and your interface. Find some Facebook groups, which it, you're in my group, apparently. So that's great. And then start learning from other people. Watch a lot of YouTube videos. Perhaps join a like a mastermind group to learn um, and get like live feedback from. Those are all great. But all of those things will help you become better faster than just trying to do it all on your own without feedback and constructive criticism and someone perhaps hearing something in your audio that you can address and fix and move on, right? So having a group of people, like-minded people, is definitely advantageous for your business to help you move forward faster, I think. Was that tangent number three or four today? Allison says, I'm hard on myself when I don't get done everything I want to get done. I fell asleep while editing last night. Oh, I've been there. I've been there. Yeah, I know myself and good enough by now to know that I know that I can only give myself, you know, maybe two hour sections of working and then I have to get up and move around, which is good for you anyway, because you don't want to sit for super long periods of time. But in those two hour blocks of work, I'll say, OK, I need to record for this long and I can edit for this long to give my my voice a rest. So I'm saying this so that as you go along, you'll have a better understanding of what your limits are and um, how to schedule things out. So you can get what's important done. You, you have to obviously prioritize the things that need to be done first. But if you're feeling a little bit of overwhelm, perhaps, and maybe trying to get too much done in too much of a short time, you might need to look at your delivery times, right? If you're telling someone you can have something done for them in 24 hours, you might want to look into maybe a two-day delivery or giving yourself just a little bit of extra buffer time to give yourself a little bit of a break or to give yourself more time just to get it done. If you're, if you're getting more busy or if you have other things that you need to do in the day, perhaps give yourself a little bit more time to get these things done. That's what I would do. Janari says, I have confidence about my voice. However, I feel like I need to learn more of the technical side of the business and to be as aggressive as possible to earn money. Yeah, the technical aspect is, I think, was one of the most time consuming things for me, for sure, because I'm I'm not. I'm not technologically, um, you know, I can't I can't think of the word. Apparently, I'm, I'm having <laughs> issues finding words, but I'm total car person. I've worked in the automotive industry for 20 years, so I can figure out technology. But learning a new DAW, learning anything technical specifically is going to be difficult. 
So you have to give yourself grace and a little bit of time just to learn it. Because in the beginning, it all looks like, you know, a foreign language to you. It does, because you don't know what the heck you're talking because there, there's lingo being used and terms that you're being that are being used that you have no idea what those even mean. So everything sounds like, you know, but give yourself time and grace to learn it. But I think you don't need to be super aggressive. I think maybe planning out a strategic maybe marketing campaign or how you're going to go about signing up for which platforms or casting sites when is going to better suit you instead of just like shotgunning stuff and hoping it'll stick. I think spending more time on this chunk on this day, this chunk on this day, and this chunk on this day is going to serve you better so you can give everything your full attention, but not being super aggressive, although the word aggressive could imply several different things. But um, don't be too aggressive, I guess, because you don't want to shortcut too much, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Mark says, speaking of analysis paralysis, a while back I was thinking about getting a website, but then fell down a rabbit hole when I realized how many different website creator platforms there are. Yeah, there are quite a few. I use Wix. I've been very happy with Wix. Um, so I would I would recommend Wix, but yeah, there's there's just like Andy was saying earlier, there's a lot of resources out there and you just have to do the research on them and find out what maybe voice actors are finding more success with which ones and then try one of those out and see which one uh, feels like a good fit for you. Um, Carrie, write your woes. Kari, write your woes. I don't know if you've ever gone over this. Have you experienced a buzzing in your recording? I've tried new chords, changing interface, clip on noise filters. Nothing seems to work. Buzzing. It sounds like an electrical issue to me. Just the first thing that I think of, it sounds like an electrical issue. So maybe check the, the plugs that you're plugged into if you're using like a surge protector. Or I would just double check all of the electrical. Maybe something's not grounded properly. I mean, there could be some sort of a, I don't know, it, it might be, I'm sure it could be other things too, but that's immediately what pops into my head. I'm in no way an expert on troubleshooting every aspect of this, but that's what immediately pops into my head is uh, electrical. Um, did... Did I just see another super chat? Hold on. Hold on. Oh my gosh, there's so many comments I get to get to. Um, no, that was oh my gosh, there are so many comments. Okay, John. John. Thank you, John. John sent another super chat. Thank you so much. Angela, I wanted to send you an early Christmas gift in case I miss next week. Thank you so much for all you do in the VO community. I have learned so much in the past year from you and others. Thank you, John. You guys are so sweet. I appreciate you. I hope you make it next week. But if you don't, I won't hold it against you. <laughs> but thank you. And happy holidays, everybody. If you don't join next week, happy holidays. Everybody be safe. Uh, hug your family. Hug your family members. No fighting enjoy their company while they're still here. Kirk says, uh, at Kari, write your woes. Do you have your cell phone in the booth with you? That's a good point. That can be a buzzy culprit. Yeah, because usually you'll get like a bzzz and like interference from your cell phone being too close to. Yeah. Claudier says, here in Brazil, after the pandemic, the market was very competitive with many new announcers recording at home. But I'm happy with my home studio being able to record for several countries in Europe. That's awesome. So you had a lot of, pardon me while I chapstick, you had a lot of uh, competition with your same accent, right? In the same sort of region that you're from. But still, your voice is still going to be different than all of theirs, right? But great for you. It sounds like you're having some success. That's great. Congratulations on that. 
Uh, Janeri says, that's very true. I've become very sensitive to the slightest noise I can hear. Mm, I still do it. Consorcio says, Adobe Audition tutorials are all available on Google. Yep, Adobe Audition has their own tutorials. Plus here on YouTube, there are a ton of people that use Adobe Audition that you can find even specific elements of Adobe Audition you can find uh, how to do here on YouTube. Leslie says, oh, Kari, I feel you. I have a radio station interfering, interfering with my recordings now. Wow. And then Kari responding to Kirk. Uh, no, I made sure to isolate my booth from other electronics other than my mic. Thank you for responding. I need all the advice I could get. I hope that you get it sorted out. Because that, that's a that's a horrible feeling. When you just go through everything and you can't find the issue. It's frustrating. Pamela says, thank you for the ACX tax info. I hope that helps because I don't have an exact answer for you, but that, that's what I would do. I would call or not call, but maybe write to customer support and say, hey, what's the problem? <laughs> Mercer sent me a heart. Thank you. Janeri uh, says, Angela, how can I pre... Pre present the noise above my closet? It seems like on top of my closet is my neighbor's bathroom. Oh, no. I stop when he takes a shower, or can I prevent the sound with moving blankets? If you wanted to invest in some sound dampening material, you can get like soundproofing material, like rock wool and stuff like that from your local hardware store if you really want to go that route to try to soundproof your booth a little bit more. But it's, it sounds like it's the same sort of thing that I run into here in the desert with the air conditioner on in the summertime. I just don't record when the air conditioner's on because it's too much noise to remove. And even with sound reduction effects and plugins and things like that, it still does a little bit of damage to my voice in the process. So I just don't record while the air conditioner is on. I edit while the air conditioner is on. And then when it's off, then I'll continue recording. So you might want to even consider that if it's a lot of like noise trickling or if he sings in the shower or something that's going to be hard to remove and post, you might just want to consider giving yourself a break. Take that opportunity to go have, you know, make yourself a cup of tea or something. Go take a walk, go pet the dog, you know, while he's taking a shower. Hopefully he's not in there very long. <laughs> um, there's, Facebook looks like Patricia posted a YouTube, uh, a YouTube link, but I'm not sure what that is. Claudier says, um, what do you think of the platform Voice123? It's one of the many casting sites out there that you can find work on. I'm a member. I'm a paying member. So I rather enjoy Voice123. Uh, Voice um, I don't audition a whole lot there. I get a lot of... Um, I don't get a lot of, well, I find myself busy with other work off of that platform, but I've, a lot of voice actors I know have found a lot of success there. It's legit. If that's what you're asking, I would, I would definitely consider signing up on voice one, two, three for work for sure. And a lot of these platforms like voice one, one, two, three voices.com and some of the other ones, they, they will allow you to um, create a free profile. You can't audition on some of these sites without becoming a paying member. But at least if you have a profile there, once you come across a good deal or a discounted offer to join, then your profile's already there. You might need to update or refresh your demos that are there, but at least the hard part, the picture and the bio and all of that stuff is already there. So I would consider doing that too. Plus it helps your SEO. If someone, tends, if someone ends up Googling you, to find you, let's just say they found you on Upwork or something and they wanted to work with you directly, then they Google your name and then they see that you've got all of these profiles on Voices.com, Voice123 and all of the others, then that just adds credibility to your name as a legit professional voice actor. So that'll help you in both ways. Um, Kirk says, at Kari, write your, write your woes. No problem. We can all use advice from time to time. Hope someone can figure it out for you. Yeah, I will echo that. I hope I hope you get that figured out. Chadwick says, would you recommend your 12-week 
course to someone just starting out or would it be more beneficial for someone with a little experience under their belt? Um, if you're talking about my mentorship program, I pretty much meet you where you are, right? Because everybody's in a different stage of their journey most of the time. But I would say before you sign up with any mentor, at least have your uh, DAW, you have a little bit of experience with your DAW, at least have your stuff sped, uh, set up, right? Have your recording space figured out like where you're going to have it. At least start with the um, treatment of your space. Have your microphone, have your interface, have your DAW selected. That way a mentor can start with you where you are and help you to grow from there. You don't necessarily have to have you know, um, audiobook titles under your belt or even any work done at all, but it's going to be more advantageous for you if there's something, meaning equipment, a space to start with. So if we need to fine tune the sound of your, uh, you know, the audio quality of your space, then we can do that from where you are, right? We can help with mic, I can help with, or whomever can help with mic technique or how to, you know, placement, but you have to have all of this stuff. Um, to give you a better jump start. Otherwise, we're just spending meetings together talking about getting a microphone, getting your interface, right? So, but really any at any point in experience other than, you know, I, I pretty much just meet you where you are and we go from there. Andy B says, I want to say maybe I am just ruminating, but I enjoy these weekly get togethers because it puts me at ease and helps me to see where where all where are all in the same boat, basically. Yes. Andy, you are not alone. You are not alone. And I'm glad that you find this helpful. I I enjoy it too. I enjoy it quite a bit. Is Tim Tibbetts still working? He does any DAWs, right? Tim Tippets with P's, T-I-P-P-E-T-S, Tippets, is a sound engineer slash voice actor. And he is amazing. He does mainly Adobe Audition. And he does have a YouTube, YouTube channel. It's VO Tech Guru. And I believe that's also his website, VOTechGuru.com. Um, he is still working. Yes. I think it might be at a um, not full-time, full-time. I know he had some medical issues recently and he may be back up and running, but I'm not 100% sure. But he was amazing. Sean says, someone just paid me $100 for an audition I submitted saying the audition was perfect. You may continue now. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that when that just works out that way. All right. Uh, Harold from uh, South Carolina here. From where do you get your motivation? I'm so frustrated. Been trying for about three months with no success. I'm learning Reaper and finally understanding the ACX requirements, but I'm really struggling here. You know, Harold, it looks like you had more to say, but it cut off. Um, I was in the exact same place you are at that point. And I think a lot of us were. I didn't start to see any kind of business until I was a few months in. I would say what you're experiencing is completely normal. It was in my in my instance anyway. You have to give yourself time. This is a marathon. This is starting a business. This is not something that you could just jump right into and make money right away. Although I have seen it happen, funny enough, but it's not it's an it's an extraordinary circumstance to have that happen. But it takes time. So be gentle with yourself. Take this time to learn Reaper, to learn everything you can about your DAW and just practice. Put yourself out there and see if you can get a little job here, a little job there. I found a job. One of my first jobs was on Craigslist looking for someone to voice a cartoon character for their short film for class, you know, but you have to just keep going. Don't be discouraged. Three months in is completely normal. Just keep going. Just keep going, Harold. Yesel, I hope I say that right. Just wanted to say hi from Maryland and that I appreciate. I appreciate you. I hope I did not butcher your name. That's like my greatest fear is to uh, say somebody's name wrong. So I hope I didn't. But thank you for joining. I appreciate you too for spending some time with us today. 
Janari says, just want to let everyone know that Angela was the very first person to encourage me to go on with voiceover. Start with LibriVox, then you learn a lot. Thank you, Janari. I'm glad I could help. You guys are amazing. Oh, I love y'all. Kirk says, gotta go. Have a book to finish, LOL. Nice to see you. And folks, remember to hit that like on the live. 48 watching, only 18 likes. Have a great day. Yeah? I, well, thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for that, Kirk. You rock. Um, oh, here is Harold again. Okay. Um, I've been struggling for two and a half months uh, with no success. I've been told how great my voice is for narration and video as well as voiceover commercials. However, I seem to have absolutely no luck on the ACX narration site. I'm currently learning Reaper and thanks and think thanks. Um, how many auditions are you doing on ACX? Just like any other audition, it's sort of right place, right time. Because, because you submit an audition or a sample doesn't necessarily guarantee you a job. You have to be the voice that the author was looking for. So it's not necessarily that you're doing something wrong. It just means that you're not the voice that they were looking for. Maybe they were looking for something a bit more nasally or somebody that could project more or I mean, who knows what it is. But just because you're not offered a job doesn't mean you're doing something wrong. So amp up your auditions. Maybe do 10 instead of one or two. You might get one of them. You might get none of them. You might get five of them. So just keep going. Don't let anything discourage you. Just keep going. And that goes with any, any audition at all. Christopher Wright says, Hey, Angela, looking forward to dropping my first audition thanks to your advice and words of encouragement. Thanks again. Good for you, Christopher. Good for you. I'm looking forward to hearing all about it when we meet up next week. Uh, Chris VGL says, thank you, Angela. I think I'm going to jump in and read my own books with your advice. I'm a confident reader. I can quiet a room of 17, 17 year olds by just reading. You inspired me to do this now. Good. I'm glad. I'd like to hear your voice if that's the case. So if you do end up narrating your own book, please share it with us what, so we can go check it out. I would love to hear it. Tiffany's 80s Dream says, I hopped on late. I'll ask my questions next time. Well, I'm glad that you're here, Tiffany. It just wouldn't be alive without you. Claudia says, oh, little hearts. Thank you. Andy B says, use headphones or not while speaking. That is also something that is a preference. Some people like to wear headphones while they're recording so they can hear what they're saying clearly, so they can listen for the mouth noise and the nose parts. But I don't because it makes me feel, A, claustrophobic and I can't move around. And B, I don't want to hear the mouth noise and the nose parts. I don't want to allow my brain to hyperfixate on things that just don't matter. So those are the two reasons why I don't wear headphones while I record. But it's preference. If you feel better listening live while you're, while you're narrating, do it. If you don't like it, don't do it. It's a preference but I don't. Consorcio says, thank you once again, Lady Angela, for another informative and entertaining Q&A. Catch you on the next one. Well, thank you for joining. I appreciate you. And I'm glad that you guys found something of interest or helpful in this Q&A. I enjoy doing these. Twisted681 says, LOL, Angela said she was too introverted to be a life coach, but as my VO life is beginning, thanks to the videos, <laughs> Angela is one of my coaches. <laughs> here, it's easier as an introvert to just share what I know. I guess the same could go for life coaching too, I suppose, but I don't know. I don't feel like I would be good enough to do that. You know, it's that imposter syndrome. I don't know if I could do that. I'm with VO. It's easy because I'm just sharing with you what I have learned. Same goes with life, I suppose. Right. But I'm glad that it, I'm glad that I helped. Andy B says, my wife heard one of the episodes of the radio show I produced and hosted on the local college station and said I sound like it is a put on like some of the people on Sirius XM. I can hear it now. If you're 
if you're one thing that I noticed is as soon as we hit the record button on our DAW, we think we need to be something other than who we are, right? That goes back to the announcer thing because you don't speak like this in your normal everyday voice, do you? No, you speak like this in your everyday normal voice. So when we hit that record button or we're in front of the mic, we become something other than what we are. And you don't need to do that. Voice acting is just people talking to other people, sharing an idea, inspiration, selling a product, whatever it is. Most of what I do is just exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm talking to you. We're friends talking to each other. That is what I do. That is all I do. And if you're reverting back to DJ voice, that could be what she's talking about. But if it was something that you did for a local college station, then that might have been necessary to do the announcer voice. Your wife, your wife might have been trying to not placate, but maybe encourage you a little bit, but say, hey, maybe try this doing a little bit differently. What I would do if I were you, Andy, is have other people listen to your work and say, okay, here was the purpose. This is what I did. What do you hear? And if they say, yeah, it sounds like it's a put on voice or something, then yeah, maybe try something different. But it might work for some situations, but not all, right? Because most of what I do is conversational. So if it sounds like you're doing an announcery thing, it might come off sounding that way. I hope that makes sense. Laura says, hey there, Angela. Thanks for sharing your knowledge. You help so many of us in such a personable way. Always appreciated. Well, good. I'm glad. That's what I'm going for. I don't want to be like, you know, I am like uber professional person and you guys can't ever get to where I'm at. And I don't know why I'm doing this voice. <laughs> because we all just people. We're all just people sharing the same dream. Right. And if I can share with you what I know to save you a little bit of time and frustration, then I'm going to do it. Pause for the coffee. Sean says, I got a buzz on my recordings when I inadvertently recorded an 8-bit. Oh, that happens too. Yeah. If you accidentally record in a different sample or bit rate, that'd do it. That'd do it. Lorna says, thank you. Have a great week. All of you too. Let's let's start to wrap this up because I, I, I got to get back. I got books I got to do. Uh, Kari says at Sean Lester, I will write that down just in case. Everybody's helping Kari. Chris says, um, from a construction standpoint, older electrical wiring can create an ambient humming. You may want to consider moving your booth away from the walls. That's a good point too. And then Kari responding to Chris, thank you. That may be the source. I usually record in my closet. I'll try to relocate my equipment so that it's away from the wall. See, you learn so much in these groups. Okay. Kari says, uh, thank you, Angela, and everyone in the chat. I've been a subscriber for a while, but never attended the lives. This is a wonderful resource. Well, good. Should join more often. <laughs> Joy says, hi, Angela. I'm super late. Plus, I'm in the middle of fixing the Christmas lights, but I'll be there next week. I need to find tips on organizing my business for 2023. That would be a great topic for next week, right? Because that's not our last Tuesday, right? We still have another one, right? I'll have to look at my calendar. But we'll, I'll think of something. If you guys have a suggestion, and even in the replay, if you're watching this in the replay, if you have a suggestion for any upcoming Q&As for a topic, or a conversation, then please give it to me and we'll see if we can work it in. Consorcio says, Tim Tippett's offers his course on how to get audio ready and mix ready online. I forgot to click on you. But yes, Tim also has courses on Adobe Audition. Audition Ready, I think it's what it's called. It's a great course. I've taken it. Consorcio says, Lenny B is another great VO audio engineer. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Whimsical Nobody says uh, to Kari, um, had similar problem. What helped most? Adobe Auditions, if you have. Noise reduction with noise capture. 
Great tutorial from Mike Russell on YouTube. See, Mike Russell is a great one to watch on YouTube too for uh, Adobe Audition. And I've used that noise capture, um, noise reduction process many, many times, like when a truck passes by or something. Joy says, I plan on learning how Audacity works so I can get better at editing. Good. You should know your DAW. Um, that is, I think, one of the most time-consuming aspects of this is learning and becoming uh, familiar and comfortable with your DAW and your DAW of choice. But learning all of that, I don't know why I keep clicking, <laughs> learning all of that is going to do nothing but help you to streamline your process and get more effective at uh, time management, too. So there's nothing bad about learning your DAW. Kari says, whimsical nobody, thank you so much. Whimsical nobody says, by the way, hi, Angela. <laughs> Hi. So glad to be able to spend this time with you and everybody. I'm glad that you're here. And then also to Kari. Also, turned down my mic again, then brought volume up post-recording. Yep. I do that too, sometimes if it's uh, noisy. Lady Lena says, someone on Fiverr wanted me to do a voice script. Turns out it was an excerpt from an author's book on Amazon who was not them. I said no, but others say I should have taken the money. Your thoughts? I would say no, because that's piracy. That's copyright infringement. I wouldn't do that. I think you were right to say no. Um, Eric A. Angela, as always, great information. See you next week. Thank you so much. Tony says, good evening from Ireland. Hope you're keeping well, Angela. I have a question. Do you or does anyone use one of those handheld digital recorders, example, Tascam, to record their raw voice and process later on? DAW? I have a uh, Zoom recorder that I use when I'm on vacation. If I'm, I use that as my interface to plug my microphone into, into my laptop. And then that way I can work on vacation. I don't use it daily, but that's what I use it for. But the Tascam is pretty much the same thing. It's like a handheld voice recorder. And I've heard a lot of people using that, either that or the Zoom voice recorder while on vacation. And then you transfer that into your DAW and then process it as you would for any other voice actor. Um, voiceover. <laughs> goo, goo, goo. Voiceover Van Dean says, your mount looks like it's a Rycote InVision model. You are so good with this stuff. Part number, like even got part number. Sorry for the repost, but my comment got missed earlier. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, voiceover Van Dean. But I think you're right. I think it's a right code. I couldn't tell you what the model number is, but you're, dang, you're good. Thank you for posting that. So for anybody looking for this shock mount that is on my shotgun mic, it's on the screen. Screenshot. And the frog was mostly kind to me today. It only visited me a few times during this live. So thank you for keeping him with you. I appreciate you. Kari says, Angela, will you do an example of you reading a male or child's part in a reading? I want to try out for an audiobook that has multiple characters. Oh, you're asking an introvert to do something on the spot? I, you know, I want to say, I don't know if I could do it on cue because I'm I'm totally going to mess it up because I'm I know there's, 40 something people here looking at me right now. So I don't know if I can, but I know that I have videos here on my channel where I have done these things. I, but for me, um, it's when you're doing male versus female voices, it's not so much about tone or pitch, mainly pitch. It's not so much about pitch, you know, high or low. It's mainly about the personality of the character. I think for me, doing a male's voice, I'm just going to drop it a little bit and maybe just add you know, speak a little bit more matter-of-factly instead of matter-of-factly like a woman would. It's sort of a female sort of ends her sentences up versus a male sort of ends it down at a down note. Um, a child's voice would be maybe a little bit up here. So it sound is a little bit younger. But it's just a matter of playing with your voice and your throat and the muscles in your throat to get your voice to do these different things. But nothing too extreme. I think is all you really need. Tony says, thanks, Angela. Thank you, Tony. Uh, Kari says, LOL, sorry. For what? What did I do? Did I do something? Did I forget something? I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry if I missed Did I miss you? Andy B says, it seems like you cannot download and install the add-ons like Waves and such on more than one computer. You can, but they only allow you a license per um, workstation. So you have to move your licenses to use these plugins from workspace to workspace, but you're only allowed to do that for some of those licenses once every six months because they don't want you sharing your plugins with everybody. They only want to make sure that one user is using them because that's what they're allowing you to do. So if you, you know, switching to a new computer or something like that, you can move your licenses from one computer to another. Um, I think it's Waves will only allow you to do it once every six months. So be careful in doing that, but you can move them. You just have to move your licenses from workstation to workstation. Uh, Andy then says, when I was in high school, I used to do tape letters to out-of-state friends, and it was normal talking. I have to channel this when I want to speak in a normal tone, like speaking in person. It takes a little bit of practice, for sure, because I, I, I did it a lot in the beginning, but I didn't realize I was doing it until someone said, hey, I think you're doing this. And then you go, oh, yeah, I'm doing the narrator voice when you don't sound like that. You sound like this. <laughs> A person, not an announcer, unless they want an announcer, but more often than not, they don't for commercial work, e-learning stuff, the stuff that I do anyway. Uh, Kari says, I'm sorry for putting you on the spot. Oh, <laughs> is that what you're saying? Sorry. <clears throat> it's that's okay. It's, it's in my head, not yours. It's fine. Thank you so much for your examples. Good. <clears throat> I'm glad that worked because I was a little nervous. But it's not your fault. That's just me. It's my own neuroses. All right. We will end it on that. You guys, I'm going to get rid of this banner here. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to wrap this up. I've got work to do. I will see you all next week. And again, thank you so much for everyone who super chatted. I appreciate you. It means more than you know. But I will be here again next Tuesday. Same bat time, same bat channel. I will see you all then. And until then, have a fantastic day, everybody. Bye.